Hey and welcome to today's lesson. We're going to take a look at the jazz standard after you've gone and I'm going to give you the chord shapes you need, give you a chart for it, so we'll go through the structure and also what's going on with the harmony. Now this is a song which is often widely interpreted incorrectly in terms of what's going on. Now stay tuned to find out why and why you don't want to make that mistake. Now after you've gone is a really old standard. It's from 1918 so it's 102 years old currently and it's written by Turner Layton and lyrics were later added by Henry Creamer. Now this song started its life as being played at very slow tempos, sort of like that sort of speed. But you know, later on you get into the 1930s and you've got people like Django Reinhardt doing it, you know, double time and go. Playing it really raucously, you know. So there's two different ways it can be played, and that's uh, important for you to understand. And versions I'd suggest you check out. Benny Goodman's from 1935 is pretty cool. Louis Armstrong's from 1929. Bessie Smith's from 27. And Django's one, which is the really kind of... Um, you know, energetic version. So those are all some cool versions to check out. And also I put in the description, check out uh, one of my viewers, Bill, his version, which he sings it. It's a really awesome version. So that's in the description too. Now I've written the chart out in double time. What I mean by this is when it's played slowly, each chord gets one bar um, or thereabouts. So it's kind of like, after you've gone, left me crying, like that. Whereas at double time and full, you know, full on speed, it's after you've gone, like that, so there's, there's two ways it can be played first off there to be aware of and we're going to look at it in the up-tempo way more like uh, Django today. Onto the shapes, you're going to need C6, C-6, you need C-sharp, diminished 7th, D-7, D7 slash A, E-7, E7 slash B, G7, G6, a minor 6, A minor 7, and A7, and B7. Quite a few chords and a lot of shapes are the same. You can use your own voicings. They're just ones that I like to use. Uh, I guess they're kind of, you know, from my sort of gypsy jazz background that I like some of those shapes for this, but there's just some suggestions. And if uh, some of those chords are technically difficult or changing between them for you, then uh, check out my video on my number one chord change practice method. Link in the description. So here's the chart, which is said you can download uh, from our website. Now, first thing we need to do is look at the key signature. So right next to the time signature, there we have the key signature, and there's one sharp, which is the key of G. Now, in the key of G, we'd expect the following chords. G, A minor, B minor, C, D, E minor, F sharp minor 7 flat 5 or F sharp diminish, back to G. So that's our seven chords that you get in the key of G. You know, early on jazz it's typical to play major chords as six, so that might more likely become you know, G6, A minor 7, B minor 7, C6, D7, E minor 7, F sharp diminish, back to G6. I've annotated the chart so the Roman numerals in red are chords in key and the blue ones are chords out of key. And the following chords are out of key. C minor 6, C sharp diminished 7th, E7, B7 and A7, so a lot of dominant 7ths. So no surprises to me that most of the chords which are out of key are dominant 7ths. Uh, so they are secondary dominants, the primary dominant of the key of G is D7, so anything that's a dominant seventh that's not a D7, we're calling a secondary dominant because it's in addition to D7. So earlier I said people often interpret this song incorrectly and they think it's in the key of C because, you know, there's this sort of um, wisdom that's often held, which is the first chord of the song is, is means it's in that key. And whilst quite often a song will start on chord one, it doesn't have to. Many great songs start on five chords or four chords or, or you know, other chords from key or out of key. And in this instance, if you look there, knowing that it's in the key of G and knowing that you know chord four is C, so we start on the four chord. And we've got um, C6, this is chord four. To C minor six. Now this is something that's come up before in many of my videos and it's called the minor four and it's where you take the four chord which is minor and make it, sorry, which is major and make it minor. Like that. Which has a really nice four. It's quite a sad sort of, when you think of the words at this point after you've gone left me crying, it's kind of very fitting because to move to the, uh, to the minor chord when the lyrics are crying, 
works really well. Now, other standards which do this start on chord four and then go to the minor four are C or my dreams which is often played in the key of F, starts on B flat, then goes B flat minor six. Another one in the key of G, Just Friends, starts on C major seven, then goes to C minor before going to a G. So they're ones to check out so you can hear the same chord movement. Because all these standards are, are using, you know, progressions that you know, other songs have, have used before. So we start on chord four, go to the minor four, which is out of key, which is why it has quite a dramatic effect. Go to chord one, G six, and then another out of key chord, we've got E seven, I've got it with the fifth and the bass for the voicing. And what is E7? Well, it's a dominant, a secondary dominant, and it's the dominant of A. So our next chord is an A, an A7. That's out of key. We'd normally expect A minor in the key of G, and that's the dominant of D. And we go to D7, which is our primary dominant, so the dominant of G, and the next chord is G. And at the end of that line, you know, we keep playing G, and then we get a G7, which is out of key, which is making the, the one chord a dominant. Why do we need to do that? Because G7 is the dominant of C, our four chord. So it's the five of four, some people will call it. And our next chord in the second section is a C. So let's play that in time. So one, two, oh, one, two, three. section. So you can hear those dominant sevenths enable that movement. The other thing to notice, uh, because it comes up again and again in standards, is that these dominants are not moving in just any random order. They're moving in fourths. So look at our chart again. E to A, that is a fourth. A to D, that's a fourth. A to G is a fourth. And G to C is a fourth. And if you put the circle of fifths on the screen, there's my mark on E. That progression, that last bit from the E7, just works its way back to C all the way up. So it goes E, seven, then we go counterclockwise, one in to A, we go one in again to D, seven, one in again to G, stay on G, G seven takes us back to C. So there is a great example of how the circle of fifths can help you see how things are moving. Just uh, remember that it's called the circle of fifths when we go clockwise. So if you're confused as why I'm saying it's moving in fourths, because if you go counterclockwise, like E to A or G to C, that's the movement of a fourth. So second section, we start on C6, chord four again, go to the minor four, so out of key, chord one, G6, then there's another E7, so secondary dominant, which, you know, in the first time through, we went to an A7, but this time we're gonna go minor. We go A minor six, which is chord two of G, back to E7, back to A minor, and then there's a nice move up a minor third to C minor 6. So, so far that's been chord 4, minor 4, chord 1, 5 secondary dominant, A minor 6, chord 2, back to secondary dominant, back to chord 2, then minor 4 again, nice move. Things are, you know, in terms of the length of we're staying on the chords here, it's, you know, everything's a lot more frantic at coming at you quicker. G, chord one, secondary dominant, B7, that's the uh, five of three, so it's the dominant chord of chord three in the key of G, which is E minor. So B, you know, if you've got a B7, how many times have you played B7 to E, or B7 to E minor, like? Um, some of the first songs I ever learnt on guitar, you know, doing that kind of movement. So B7 resolves to chord 3, E minor 7. So we've got G6, B7, secondary dominant out of key, E minor 7. Then uh, you can have a few different chords here. I like to use this, C sharp diminished 7th. And then we're back to chord 1. Then we've got a 2, 5. A minor 7, D7. Back to chord 1. Now because we need to get back to the very start, we need another second dominant, we need G7 to lead us back to kick it all off again on a C. So what are the takeaways from after you've gone? One, that for an early jazz standard, it's got a hell of a lot of chords, but there's some really important things happening in it. And I think for me, one of the most important things is that starting on the four chord, uh, the use of the major four to the minor four, which is you know a common device by songwriters, in all genres. The use of secondary dominance moving in fourths to get around, you know, to cycle back to get home. If you're playing this in a group or playing this with someone else, 
you've got to work out how to finish it and it's quite difficult because the last chord is a dominant seventh in the form and if you play a G7 the next chord wants to be C which would be incorrect because uh, you need to finish on a G so whatever you do when you're trying to finish it off don't play that G7 because you're going to get stuck and then you're going to go back in a loop and you're not going to be able to get out of it It'd be like the Bermuda Triangle or something just be wary of that so a song which finishes on a secondary dominant built off the first chord could screw you over when you want to try to finish it because uh, you need to finish on a, a G and not a G7 because that G7 has got that pull to the C and it needs to go there but if you finished on the four chord it would sound unresolved so uh, just something to bear in mind. I mentioned loads of versions earlier, go and check them all out, find some other versions, find ones you like, uh, listen to them, get used to the, the way people interpret the chords and, and, and play and sing the melody. Learn the words, you know, it's um, helpful when you try and learn the melody as well, you know, try and know the words, it help, might help you remember it more, more easily. I really love this whole starting on the four chord thing, just the, the sound, you know, you feel like that's the one chord when you start on that C. But it, then the stability of the song is just, you know, the rug's pulled from beneath your feet and then we land there. And I feel like it's a song which is always, you know, feeling quite unsteady. It's always going somewhere, it's always moving somewhere, which is interesting. And I think it, it suits the sort of uh, turmoil of the lyrics, I suppose, doesn't it, really? Um, but anyway, enough of me yakking on about it, I could, could all day. Uh, if you've enjoyed today's lesson, hit that like button. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for Jazz Guitar Lessons every Wednesday and Saturday. Be sure to grab PDFs of both the chords and the chart. Link in the description and pinned comment. And see you next Wednesday or Saturday for my next lesson. Take care.